Cheryl Powell, good morning. I'm good. How are you? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Lanika. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. My God, thank you. My God, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, good morning. And we offer you this place. Good morning, good morning. Hey, Vicki Johnson. Hey, Carol King. Good morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, 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 thank you. My God, thank you, Lord. 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 Hey, Drea. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My God, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Good morning. My God, I thank you. Yeah. It's not for wealth or fame. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My God. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you, Lord God. We bless you. We praise you. We magnify you. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Lakeisha. I am Lakeisha M. Johnson, a.k.a. L.M.J. And I am just glad to be here with you this morning. And I am full, like I am full from yesterday. 
I am full from last night. Um, and I am just grateful for who God is in our life. I don't even know if I slept good last night. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about ladies Bible study. And if you're not a part of our ladies Bible study group on Facebook, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to ask somebody to get you in the group. I want you to email us at info at just being lmj.com. I don't want you to miss what's going on in that group. God is growing us in grace and growing us in the things of God. And the woman of God taught the word last night. And I have been full since last night. Like I literally, I was asleep, but I wasn't asleep. My spirit was so stirred up. Like my spirit was so stirred up. I was um, praying in the spirit. Like it was, I was singing in my sleep last night. I woke up praising God this morning. Like it just was a night last night. And so last night I was asleep, but I wasn't asleep. And I know yesterday stirred something in me. So Lord, I am just grateful. I'm grateful for Shonda. I'm grateful for the word that was taught. And I'm grateful for the word that's going, going to go forth today. If you haven't been, um, if you haven't been um, connected to the devotional, I'm going to admonish you to go subscribe to the YouTube channel, Coffee and Conversations with Lakeisha and get connected, like get connected. And then I'm also going to admonish you to go and subscribe to our daily devotional. We have a team of writers and they write from their own journey with God and, um, as we write with the own, the own, in our own journey with God, we just share with you God, with God. Well, the way that you're going to get that is you're going to submit your uh, emails. We're not going to spam you. We're not going to overwhelm you with a whole bunch of stuff, but you'll, you'll stay connected to the ministry that way. So the website, LakeishaMJohnson.com, click, click the subscribe button and let us send you daily devotionals, written devotionals every day. And the written devotional is always in sync with the online devotional, but it's always a little bit different. And we added a man to our team of writers. Ronald Perry is our devotional male writer, and he's going to come with a different perspective as well. And I'm excited the way we're growing. We are releasing his first devotional today. And we have Tracy Mosley and we have Jessica Thompson and I write and Shonda writes, and God is just growing this ministry liberally and profoundly. And I am just grateful for absolutely everything you do. So that's two things for you. If you're a lady and you're not in the ladies Bible study group, go join. You want what's going on in that group. And then if you are not subscribed to the daily devotional, go to the website, Lakeisha M. Johnson. You can also find out more about, um, my the ministry who i am who my ministry team is like you can find all all that information how we got started i'm gonna get started today because i have a lot to put in your quiver <laughs> i have a lot the holy spirit is gonna fill your fill your quiver today um and i i just he's gonna fill your quiver <laughs> today and so i need to get started he or he's going to fill you until you quiver let me say it that way he's gonna fill you until you quiver right? I I just believe that today. He's going to fill you, right? He's going to fill you until you quiver. Um, I'm grateful for the word today. Um, I titled today's message, Breaking Generational Curses. But remember, we're still in Ephesians 5 and we were supposed to move to, we're moving into learning how to submit correctly. We're at the end of Ephesians 5. But I told you before you learn how to submit that God was going to prep you before submission. And if you're not married, this is really good for you. And if you are married, this is really good for you. And it's all good for you because it's all God, like it's all God. So I am just grateful for what God is doing and how he is strengthening us and he, how he is growing it up. Right. So I need you, um, to take this sound counsel. That's what this is. Sound counsel from the Holy Spirit. And remember, we learned the Holy Spirit as counselor, right? And counsel doesn't always feel great, but it's to give us the wisdom, the knowledge and the understanding we need so that we can grow into the things of the Lord. This week, I told you the theme was the mission. We are on a mission to understand what God is saying to us about our relationships, to understand what God is saying to us about 
marriage, to understand what God is saying to us about our children, about our purpose. And so we're going to do that. So let me pray. And then let's get in the word today. Father God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We honor you. We extol you. We bless your name. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift your name on high for you are the king of kings and you are the king of glory and you are Lord strong and mighty. And we just honor you today, Lord God. We thank you for being just and for being fair and for being sovereign and for being present and for being practical when we needed you to be practical. And we thank you, Father God, for just a fresh wind blowing on us today. We thank you, Father God, for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for grace. We thank you, Father God, for a fresh anointing, one that destroys the yokes, bondage of sickness and disease. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that dwells within. And Father God, we thank you for Jesus. 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 We thank you for growing us in grace. We thank you for your mercy, for giving us brand new mercies every day. Show us your mercy today, Lord God. Let us be enveloped in your love. Strengthen us, Father God. Fill us till we quiver. Fill our quiver. Fill us, Lord God. Fill us up today. Let our cup runneth over so that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. We want more of you. We want more of you. We want more of you. We want more of you and we want less of us. We want more of you and less of us. So bring it on. Holy spirit. My God, we empty ourselves out before you. We cast all our cares upon you today, Lord, dear Lord. We just lay it all at your feet, Father God. We're emptying ourselves out so that we can receive more of you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us the tools, the strategies, the wisdom, the knowledge to break generational curses, Lord God. We thank you and we honor you in thought, action, and deeds today, Lord God. Let us glorify you, Lord God. Let us glorify you, Lord God, in our words, in our phone calls and our text messages in our homes and on our jobs. Lord God, let your name resound throughout all the earth. My God, I thank you. My God, I bless you. Strengthen your vessel today, Lord God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength. You are my redeemer. My God, you are my all and all and all and all and all. And I'm telling you, I need you, daddy. I can't do anything without you. I need you liberally supply us with wisdom today, Lord God. We need your wisdom. Make us some of the wisest people in the world, Lord God, and continue to grow us in grace. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. We release our angels today, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that the angels go to work on our behalf, Father, bringing the resources we need from the north, south, east, and west. Lord God, daily load us with benefits. We receive our daily portion today. Daily load us with benefits, Lord God. Let your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth. We bond every satanic attack, plot, ploy. Father God, back to the pits of hell from which it came, Lord God. We thank you, Father God. You are just and your justice came through Jesus. So we plead the blood of Jesus over this day, our spirit, our soul, our mind, our body, our homes, our cars, our jobs, our neighborhood, our city, our state, our nation, and our world over our children, over our extended family members, our cousins and them. We plead the blood of Jesus. We set a hedge of protection around them. We thank you that the blood and the word is the state. Standard. Father God, we thank you, thank you, thank you that your angels are encamped around us all day long to and fro. And when we leave our homes today, they're going to be just like we left them or better before. Strengthen us, our, strengthen our marriages, strengthen us in our singlehood. Strengthen us in parenting, strengthen us in purpose, Lord God. Open the eyes of our understanding to the hope and call of who you called us to be in Christ Jesus. Give us revelation knowledge in your word. Give us ears to hear, Lord God. Give us eyes to see. Pour your spirit out upon our flesh so that we are able to prophesy, that we are able to teach, Lord God, that we are able to preach, that we go out throughout the nations. I thank you, Father God, that this devotional is in every home. My God, Father God. 
God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you throughout the world. My God, fill us, fill us, fill us, fill us in our quiver today. We thank you, Lord God, for grace. We thank you for peace. We thank you for love. We thank you for understanding. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for knowledge, Lord God. Now, Jesus, give us your holiness. Let your holiness be the standard in our life. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I release your grace upon your people today. The grace for every circumstance, the grace for every situation, Lord God. Let them stand in need of nothing, Lord God. Liberally supply all their needs according to your riches and glory. Father God, let them walk in total health and healing today. For you were already bruised for our iniquities, chastised for our peace. And by your stripes, my God, pierced for our transgressions. And by your stripes, my God, we were healed. So we take healing today. We receive healing today. We receive receive provision today. We thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord God. We thank you, Father God. Right now, you're putting 10,000 to flight, Lord God. We lift up our White House today, our president. We cover his mind in the blood of Jesus, the Senate, the state, the Supreme Court Justice, our governor, Asa Hutchinson here in Arkansas, my mayor, Frank Scott. We lift them up to you today. We cover them in the blood of Jesus today. We thank you, Lord God. They will not be given over to a reprobate mind, Lord God, that the justice will come, that they will receive your wisdom, your knowledge and understanding. We thank you for the Christians rising up in government, Lord God, those that will take a stand for what's right. We thank you, Father God, as this is a elect election season, Father God, that we are not making mo emotional decisions, that we are voting based on an educated decision of what's best for our country, Lord God, according to your eyes, not our own. Let us not be given over into our emotions today. Let us be emotionally sound. Mm. Let us be emotionally sound today, Lord God. Let us not be blowing to and fro like the wind. Let us not accept anything as truth. Let your word be the only truth. Let us live line upon line and precept upon precept. We cover our children in the blood of Jesus today. We thank you. They are able to retain everything that they need to retain in school. We thank you that they honor us, that they rise and call us blessed. We thank you that they are not given over to a spirit of rebellion, that they choose you first, that they seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, Lord God, and everything else is going to be added unto to them, Lord God. We thank you. They are not tempted to do anything ungodly through peer pressure, through music or more. We thank you, Lord God. They are not subject to the diseases of this age, Lord God, but they are healthy and whole. Depression, you have to go in the name of Jesus. My God, the spirit of sexual immorality. You have to go in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you are giving them friendships that honor you, Lord God, in relationships. And if they are in anything that does not align up with your word, we thank you. You are severing and breaking the cords right now in the name of Jesus. Devil, you are defeated. They will fulfill their purpose. They will. I don't care how old they are. They will fulfill their purpose. My God, they will fulfill their purpose. They will fulfill their purpose, Lord God. Thank you that they are coming out of darkness into the marvel light. We thank you that all the prodigal sons and daughters are returning home now. We're looking for them. We take a stance today in the spirit, Lord God. You said that if we train up a child in the way they should go, that even if they depart, they'll return. So we thank you today. They are returned to sender. We thank you today. Return to sender. They're returned to you. They're returning. They're coming back to you, Father God. And we thank you that there is a liberal amount of grace, Lord God, and your mercy is in place and all the shame and all the doubt and all the worry that is being cast to the side and they are hungering and thirsting for righteousness Lord God we lift up our marriages today we thank you for godly marriages that honor you we thank you for marriages that superimpose our ideas for your own, that your design for marriage, your glory for marriage is being gotten out of our life. And we thank you for purpose. And we thank you for ministry. And we thank you for our careers and our jobs. And we thank you, Lord God, that we are understanding that we are sent on assignment. Give us clarity in our mission today. Give us clarity in our mission today. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Now open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing we do not have room for. For you said in your word, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, 
runneth over shall men and women liberally give into our bosom. We thank you that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the righteous and you are transferring wealth right now. We thank you, Father God, that you are increasing our supply, enlarging our territory, Father God, bringing us into the more of you so that we can do more for you. We thank you for those that are called to finance the kingdom, that you are liberally supplying them, Lord God. Give them witty ideas and inventions, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for your glory. We thank you, God, for your glory. We thank you, God, for your glory. We thank you for keeping us from danger, seen and unseen, Father God. For you said he or she or Lakeisha who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I thank you, Lord God. We are under the shadow of the Almighty in Jesus' name. Amen. My God, I thank you. 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 My God, my God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My God, I thank you. My God, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you. 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 Double the double, double the double. Give us a double portion of grace in Jesus name. My God, I thank you. My God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My God, I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord God, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. My God, I thank you. There is going to be a um, liberal amount of wisdom given today. And if you will take this wisdom and spread it, you know, like you butter bread, if you will take this wisdom and spread it like buttered bread, that you will get the wisdom that you need for marriage, for relationship. And you will hear and see what God is saying to us today. And so yesterday we talked and we um, got some lessons from Ruth. And today we're going to take a little bit and we're going to talk about Esther. And I'm not going to necessarily re read to you the story of Esther, but I'm going to show to you why Esther was so significant and important. And I think I've been studying Esther off and on and Ruth off and on and Joseph off and on. And God just keeps bringing me back to their stories. And then I'm going to share some of my story because we are overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And so I'm going to give it all to you wrapped up. Uh, up the way that Jesus gave it to me. I had to move my cup because I don't want to get excited and coffee everywhere. And um, there's a po there's power in this story, the story of Esther. If you've never read the story of Esther, you should go read the story of Esther. So I'm going to pro provide a summary to you um, as much as I possibly can. Uh, remember, we are still in Ephesians five. We have been talking about submit. We were we we need to go into submission. But before we go into submission, we've got to deal with the the selection of our mate. We've got to deal with marriages. We've got to understand the mission for marriage because many of us don't understand the mission for marriage. That's why our marriages are not in alignment with the word of God. That's why we don't know how to seek out kingdom marriages. We haven't sought out kingdom marriages. We don't really understand what God has said to us about marriage. And so we've got to understand the mission of marriage and the mission of parenting and who and what God is and what God is saying through us through marriage. And so today our lesson comes through Esther, right? Our lesson comes through Esther and I may go back and pick up Ruth. So if you didn't see yesterday, you definitely need to go see yesterday. And if you didn't see, um, if you didn't see, um, um, if you ain't been connected all year, you need to go back to October. I'm telling you, October is the starting point when God will begin to grow us and change us. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about Esther. I want to give you a little history about, um, Esther. Esther was a Jewish queen in a Persian empire. She was a Jewish queen in a Persian empire. Thank you for reminding me of that. Thank you for that. Um, we are on Facebook and Instagram and Tammy Burris just said, thank you, Jesus, for my marriage becoming a kingdom marriage. So I don't want you to think this is just for single people. Even if your marriage is not where it's supposed to be, you're going to be able to get something out of this and you're going to be able to change your prayers. And once you change your prayers, it's going to change the trajectory of your marriage, right? And so we're 
we're going to take a look at Esther's setup today and understand how Esther functioned. And I hope I'm going to be able to get into all this. So Esther was not, um, Esther was very ordinary. That's a very good way I'm going to say it. And one of the very first things that we're going to learn from Esther is how God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Like, and so if the enemy tried to cancel you out and make you think that the things that God is calling to you is incapable, right? Or that a marriage for you is incapable or a kingdom marriage for you is possible. I'm telling you, he was lying to you, right? He was lying to you. He was lying to you and, and victory is going to be your story. And so we see this story, this beautiful story of this is this Jewish girl. Esther was born at a time when Israel was in captivity. Um, and as a consequence to their disobedience to God, this is why Israel was in captivity. They were not in captivity just because people were being mean to them. They were in captivity because they were being disobedient to God. But this is how I love. Remember, I think we were reading Isaiah 61. I love our God. He always has an audible. He always will put something in place. Once he has decreed, or declared something over you, it stands. It is not, um, it does not change. It stands. It's sovereign. It is what it is. When God has said, I knew you, when God said, I formed you, when God made a decision, this was the direction for your life. It stands. The only way that we change that is when we make a decision that we're not going to fall into that. And so we see Esther, uh, Esther was orphaned. Esther's parents were killed and her Mordecai, her uncle adopted adopted her as her daughter. And so Esther was an ordinary woman living in a foreign land. And she was a part of a, a minority race, right? A minority race that was not even esteemed. And so it is a really big deal that Esther becomes queen. It's a really big deal. It's a really big deal that you understand her background. It's a really big deal that you understand that her people were not favored. It's a really big deal that you understand that she was orphaned, that she had experienced tragedy at such a young age. But even in what looks like a impossible situation, we see that the God, that God is possible. And so, um, on a regular day, God chose Esther to do through her what he planned to do through her before she was born. Jeremiah one and five says to us, but he formed us. He told the prophet, he said, I formed you in your mother's womb and I called you to the nations to be a prophet even before you were born. So he had a plan. He had a, he already had an established plan for her. He already said, this is who Esther is to be. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared for us in advance to do. So you have already been prepared in advance to do this thing. I told you guys, when I started talking to you about my own situation in marriage and how my husband and I came about, God had already prepared us to be married. It was a very unlikely situation. It was not a very normal situation, but, but God had already set it up for us to be married, right? And so we, we learned from Esther first that God uses extraordinary, un, uh, ordinary people, right? And that God has already prepared for us in advance for what we are supposed to do. First Corinthians 10 and 11 says, now all these things happen to them. Boy, there's power in that verse. Now all these things happen to them as an example, but they were written for our instruction. So you need to imagine that God has already written out the story, the marriage, the circumstance, the situation, even when we get in it and we ain't got no business being in it. He's already told us in Romans 8, 28, I'm going to take all that bad stuff and make it for your good. For those of you who love me, for those of you who chase me. Right. And so first Corinthians 10 and 11, right. He's already doing this. So God's Esther's story is important to us. We're going to see some most significant things from Esther's story. Esther's story is significant for us. Esther, Esther's story is so important to us. The other thing that I love that we learn about Esther is Esther, even though she was being brought up by Mordecai, she wasn't bitter to her circumstances. 
She wasn't bitter to her circumstances. She wasn't complaining like Ruth. She wasn't complaining about her circumstances. She wasn't saying, oh my gosh, I'm a Jew. I'm never going to be nothing. She wasn't saying, oh my gosh, I'm orphaned. I can never be nothing. Like she wasn't going to, she wasn't doing that. She wasn't doing it. She had to endure in her upbringing. She had to endure in her circumstances, right? It says, the Bible says Esther was obedient to Mordecai, right? As she was brought up to him, she wasn't resisting Mordecai. She wasn't saying, you ain't my dad. Daddy, you don't tell me what to do. Esther wasn't living in that zone. She was grateful, right? And even though she was growing up in very painful circumstances, right? She wasn't questioning God's goodness. She wasn't distrustful towards God. As a matter of fact, the Bible indicates that, that her heart was very tender towards God, very tender towards him and very tender towards others. Her heart had to be tender towards God and tender towards others, or she wouldn't be able to do what God was calling her to do. And so even though she didn't, and you're going to see a little resistance. She wasn't necessarily wanting to do this. She was not necessarily wanting to do this. And you need to understand what happens here because of cultural things. Esther is taken into the king and she loses her virginity. Come on, y'all. She loses her virginity to a man that she's not in love with. She loses her virginity, not, not, not because um, this is what she has decided today. She becomes property of the king. She makes a decision. She could have said, I'm not taking this. I'm not doing this. She becomes property of the king, but she left her welfare. She left her welfare in the hands of Mordecai. She left her hand, her welfare in the wisdom, right? There is wisdom in the multitude of councils. She left her welfare in the hand of Mordecai. She saw something in, in what Mordecai said. She trusted Mordecai with her life. So she she did not have a lot of control over her future. Esther 2.14 says, in the evening she would go there and in the morning return to another part of the harem to care of the king's eunuch who was in charge of the concubines. She would not return to the king unless he was pleased with her and summoned her by name. So culturally, she was not in a situation where she had a lot of of her own choices, right? I, she cannot, she didn't have a whole lot of her own choices. I can't imagine what life looked like, right? For her at this time, but she didn't freak out, right? She didn't see Mordecai as a control fee. We also learn from this that Esther is very humble. She is very humble. The chapter confirms that Esther was indeed beautiful. Like the chapter confirms that the, that she was indeed beautiful, but she wasn't using her beauty to try to get what she wanted. She wasn't using her curves. She wasn't using her body. She wasn't, she wasn't putting herself in the position. She wasn't using anything in her physical presence to try to get what she wants. She was gorgeous. The Bible indicated that the sister was fine. If we want to put it in layman common terms, she was fine, but that's not what she was using to get what she wanted. That's not how she was getting connected to purpose. She was not getting connected to purpose purpose, my sisters, because of her body. She was being connected because of her heart being tender towards God, right? And it says this, it says Esther's humble spirit shined brightly and she won favor in the eyes of all she saw, including Haggai, the king's eunuch, who had been put in charge of the virgins. So she was getting special treatment, not because of her body. She wasn't getting treatment because of the way she shaped. She wasn't getting treatment because of the way she looked. She wasn't getting treatment because of her profile pics and the things that she was putting out there. She wasn't. That's not why she was getting treated. She was getting treated because she was humble. She was getting treated because her heart was turned towards God, right? And so when the king summoned right her she was allowed to bring certain things with her but she only brought one thing she listened to the eunuch because the eunuch was positioning for her for favor and if you didn't know by now that someone else was tied to your favor if you didn't know by now that someone else was tied to your favor, someone else was tied to the next big big thing then you are sadly mistaken right 
And we gonna, we're going to, we're learning from Esther that, that God's favor, God's favor would position her for what would happen next, right? God is sovereign over the heart of the King. The God is sovereign. You don't have to manipulate it. You don't have to try to make it happen. You don't have to force yourself into any, a relationship with someone for all my single folks. You don't have to try to position yourself. You ain't got to over post. You ain't got to drop pictures. You ain't got to prove to somebody how sexy you are. You ain't got to try. You don't have to lessen yourself. You don't have to lessen yourself. You don't have to stop being beautiful. I don't want you to not put makeup on and all this other stuff. I don't want them to notice who I am. No, I'm not saying that, but you don't have to try any tricks. You don't have to try any traps. You don't have to do any of that. You just got to be you. You just got to be you. You just got to keep your face towards God. You got to have the willingness of Esther. You got, you've got to do this. And so this is what I love. This is what I love. Esther 2 and 17 says, when Esther spent the night with the king, God caused his heart to love Esther more than all the women. And she won grace and favor in his sight. And she won grace and favor in his sight. God caused his heart. God caused his heart. You don't have to cause anyone's heart to love you. And remember, we, we determined yesterday that if our prayers line up with the will of God, if our prayers are in God, if we are constantly with our face towards God, if we seek ye first, the kingdom of heaven first, if that's our focus, then God will cause favor to come to us when we are in his will for our life, right? Proverbs 21. Yeah. No tricks, no traps, no extra sauce. You ain't got to have all that. If your face is in God's faces, if you're focused on God more than you are the relationship in the marriage, if you understand that you don't have to do absolutely anything to get intention, you don't have to add no extra. God can cause, God will cause favors. Proverbs 21 and one says in the Lord's hand, the King's heart is a stream of water. He channels towards all he please. So God is not hard. If God is not hardened towards you, man cannot be hardened towards you. God, God, if God is not hardened towards you, but even in just being you, you got to figure out who you are. You got to really figure out, you got to know who you are. And so God caused her favor. God caused favor to come upon her. God caused her to be favored. Right. And and we know that God can do this. Romans 15, four reminds us whatever written in former days was written for our instructions that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. We might have hope. The other thing is Esther needed mentors. Mordecai was put in position. See, even though her parents died, come on, y'all got to get this today. Even though her parents died, Esther needed Mordecai for what would happen next. She needed to be connected to Mordecai. Perhaps her parents didn't have the grace, the message. She would have probably not even been in this position, right? See her beauty and all of this was working. Her gifts were working for her. She may not have been in this position had she not been connected to Mordecai, right? And so she needed older mentors. She needed Mordecai. The scripture tells us that there is wisdom and that's, that's uh, Proverbs 11 and I think three Proverbs, Proverbs 11, 14, where there is no counsel, the people fail, but in a multitude of counsels, there is safety in a multitude of counselors, there is wisdom. And so because of the connection to Mordecai, she gets the wisdom she needs. She gets wise counsel. She's connected and positioned in place to change a generation. See, when we started discovering what our mission was for marriage, most of us thought marriage was about us. Most, most of us thought marriage was about us. Most of us thought marriage was about bringing us out of sin. Most of us thought marriage was giving us someone we could live the rest of our life with. We didn't understand that our marriage was connected to something greater. We didn't understand that if we honored God and we married the right person, that we would begin to break generational churches curses and change something for generations and change something for generations. And so even though she may not have understand why her parents died, or she may not have understood what happened to her, or may she may not have understood why she was born into this particular family, or she may not have understood what had happened to her. She may not have gotten it. The depth of Mordecai's love for her was positioning her in a, putting her in a position in which she would change, not just her, but she would change a generation, right? 
she would change. She would change something. Stuff would change for her. Stuff would change for Israel once she was in place. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. She was not courageous in her first response. She didn't want to, she didn't want to take this. She didn't know what this meant. She was not um, as bold as you think that she was, but there is something significant. We are learning from Esther that the situation that she was in had nothing to do about her. And so we've been talking about mate selection this week. And if you'll let God open the eyes of your understanding, you'll begin to see that your marriage, the, the marriage you're in or the marriage that you're coming to is to break generational curses. It's not for you. It's not for you just to feel good. It's not for you just to say, I have a spouse. It's not for you. Your marriage was created for you to begin to break generational curses. Curses. Esther was being called in. So I need to share my little, a little bit of my personal testimony. I didn't get married because I fell in love. I ain't want to tell y'all this today. I ain't even want to tell you. I didn't. I did not get married because I fell in love. That is not why I got married. My, it's, it's not, it's deeper than marriage is your, it's deeper. Like it's deeper than that. I did not get married because I fought, fell in love. I got married because I obey God. Like I got married because I obey God. Like my, 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 my marriage was not, my marriage was not about me. My marriage was not about my husband that I did not get married because my husband and I didn't even date before we got married. We, we did not date. We were two friends, um, both seeking the face of God, both on a plane to please God, no matter what. And when we began to pray and ask God, that's why I told you this dating thing and culturally, a lot of the things that we've been taught about relationships, right? A lot of that is culture. My husband and I were not in love. We did not date before we, we got married. That is not what happened. Um, and so when we were in this circumstance or situation, we were two good friends who were seeking out the will of God for our lives. That that's what we were doing. We were two friends seeking out the will of God for our lives. And when we began to pray and God began to give us revelation, I, I've always had a deep love, admiration and respect for him because of the friendship that was established first, the relationship that was established first, the purpose that was established first. But we were not living out some romantic love story per se by human times. We did not date before marriage. We were good friends before marriage. And when God began to reveal reveal to us that his will for our life was for us to be married we began to take it into the secret place we began to bathe it into prayer and we began to get wisdom of the counsel of the holy spirit we did not reveal to anybody we were getting married for three months the lord gave us a scripture and and and, and when he took moses and his mother hid him for three months we began to hide it. We hid it for three months. We began to bathe it in prayer for three months. We did not tell anybody. We did not, we did not have to announce it to the world. We did not Facebook post it. It was not everybody's business. What was transpiring between us, but what would divinely begin to happen to us and position us as we were praying together and seeking the face of the Lord, he would begin to knit us. He would begin to join us. He would begin to, and I told you guys, we didn't have sex before marriage, which ain't none of your business, but we didn't. He would begin to knitly join us together through our obedience and through us seeking the face of God. We were, we were co-joined through the face of God. We were co-joined through what God was calling us to do. And when I share more of our story this week and more about our people, he was causing our marriage to come into place so things could be accomplished. He needed me and I needed him. <laughs> he needed me and I needed him, but it was not this torrid love affair. It was not this emotional thing. And this is not everybody's story, but this is my journey. This is my story written so that I could give you, and I'm going to be honest. I don't know that I first responded to this like, yes, Lord. Right. I, I, I was like Esther. It was, I was not as courageous. I did not understand it. If for those of you who don't know, my husband was born with sickle cell anemia. He passed in June of 2014. For those of you guys who are new on the devotional. And so it was, it was, I was, I, I didn't understand everything God was doing because in my head, I thought I was getting ready to fall into this romantic love affair. I had watched one, two lifetime, one too many lifetime movies. 
I had um, seen too many Hallmark movies. I thought love, romanticism, and all of this was a fantasy. And it wasn't a fantasy. It wasn't about a fan. It wasn't about a fantasy. And so, as we begin to hear God and seek God and seek the face of God, that's why I'm telling you, the 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 ministry that you're seeing now is due to the marriage that I had then, right? The ministry that you're seeing now is due to the marriage that I had then. What we see. Esther do is because of her position with the king. You have to understand this. What we see Esther do is because of the position with the king. What we see Esther do for Israel is because of her position with the king. She married for purpose. She married for the mission. She married for the greater cause. She was not marrying for lust. She was not marrying for herself. She was marrying for God's people. She was marrying for the generation. So we know that there is an edict, right? That we know there are some Jewish haters. We know there are some people that do that are not for the Jews and they are starting to speak into the ears, right? They are starting to speak into the ears. And so when I got married, I got married to be in position with the king. I got married to be in position with the king. I didn't get married for myself. I got married to be in position with the king. That's why I got married. I didn't get married for my own glory and my own gratification and summer vacations. See, when you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, everything else is going to be added unto you, right? And I'm just being honest. All of that stuff will come with it. That's cool. There's nothing wrong with desiring that stuff. That stuff will come with it. But when you make a decision that your mission is for you to get married, to be in position with the king of glory so that God can get the glory out of your marriage, your marriage will begin to look different. And so so we know that there was assault. There was an assignment. There were some people in the kingdom that were hating on the Jews and they are about to have them ex executed and killed, killed. I need to give you another piece of this so that you understand this. Right. And so Esther is in the position where she needs to go before the king. Now, if you go back historically and understand this, no one was supposed to go before the king without being called. No one, no one was supposed to go before the king without being called. And and so Mordecai is saying to Esther, don't forget where you, why you here. <laughs> don't forget while you here. I need you to understand. Don't forget while you, why you are here. You are not here just to be with the king. That's not why you're here. And you're not here to be spoiled and lavish on. You got a mission, Esther. And I'm telling you now, your people are going to die if you don't get in position. That's what Mordecai told her. Your people are going to die if you do not get in position. And this is what I love. This is what what's important that Esther did, right? Esther called Mordecai and she said, do me a favor, get all the Jews and let's fast. See, if you didn't understand this and, and I'm just giving you as the, this as a clue, this is, yeah, you there to save your people. <laughs> you there to save your people, right? You there to save your people. I love that. This is what Esther does next because she didn't understand it all because she needed um, God to intervene because she needed God's strength. She understood where her strength she needed. There's a strength you need for marriage. There's a strength that you need in your singleness because she knew she understood. She said, I need you to gather all the Jews. I need you to gather all the Jews and we're going to fast <laughs> and we're going to fast and we're going to fast and we're going to fast. I need you to gather all the Jews and we're going to fast this thing. We're going to get in position. We're going to get in God's face. We're we're not going to yield over to food. We're going to fast this thing on out. We're going to do this. We're going to, we're not going to do this. We're going to fast this thing on. And I started thinking about chapter 58, right? And it, and it says, and it, and this is what it says. A shout out with the voice of Trump it blasts. Shout aloud. Don't be timid. Tell my people Israel of their sins. Yet they act so pious. They come to the temple every day and seem delighted to learn all about me. They act like a righteous nation that would never abandon the laws of its God. They ask me to take action on their behalf, pretending they want to be near me. We have fasted before you. They say, why aren't you impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves and you don't even notice. And he says, I will tell you, I will tell you why it's because you are fasting to please yourself. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? This kind of fasting will never get you where anywhere with me. Humble, you humble yourselves by going through the motions of penance, bowing your heads like reeds, bending in the wind. You dress in burlap and cover yourselves with ashes. Is this what you call fasting? Do you really think this will please? 
please the Lord. No, this is not the kind of fasting I want. If you're fasting, right? And so they walked into a fast. They were called into fast. She took authority over the situation, not in her own strength. She, she took authority over a situation. She had to go before her husband. She had to go before the king. She had to petition him for the people, but she didn't take it in her own strength. As a matter of fact, she took it in a fast. She took it in a fast and then she waited on God's timing instead of jumping into action. She spent time in prayer. She spent time in fasting and she would wait on the wisdom of God to direct her on how and when to approach the king. She did not do this in her own strength. And I'm going to tell you for your marriage to come and for your marriage that you're in now, if you continue to try to do it in your own strength, you're not going to have the favor of the king. You're not going to have the favor of the king. You're not. God can't be glorified because there again, your marriage is for a mission. And remember, we're asking the big questions. What mission is my marriage accomplishing? What is the purpose in my marriage? Before I begin to decide what my marriage should look like, God, how do you get the glory out of the marriage? My marriage was created to break generational curses. And so she waited on God's time timely. She waited on God to direct her. She waited on God's timing to approach the king. And when she approached the king in God's timing, it would begin to change everything. But this is what I love. Esther understood the sacrifice of what she was doing. And in Esther 4 and 16, she says, if I die, I die. Y'all ain't ready for that kind of marriage, right? You ain't ready for that kind of marriage. She said, if I die, I die, right? If I die, I die. She pledged to God that this marriage is not about me, that this circumstance and situation is not about me. And she says to him, he said, if I die, I die. If I die, I die. If it is what it is, but I'm going to fulfill my purpose. I'm not going to be afraid that he's the king. I'm going to honor you, God, in this. I'm going to go do exactly what you asked me. She said, if I die, I die. She was sold out. She was sold out that her marriage would glorify God. She was sold out that God would get the glory out of her marriage. She wasn't doing what was popular. She wasn't doing even what was comfortable and felt good to her. She had made a decision that it wasn't about her. <laughs> she had made a decision that w- that it wasn't wasn't about her. She had made a decision that God had positioned her in this marriage for his glory and his glory alone. His glory and his glory alone. And so she loved her people. She loved her purpose more than she owned, uh, loved her own comfortability more than she owned, loved her own life. And so when we say re- yes to God in marriage, we're saying yes to the mission. We're saying yes to the purpose. And we know if you've read the story of es- Esther, we know what happens next because she's bold before she's because she's forthcoming because she operates in timing because she doesn't operate in her own strength because she see, receives the wisdom of the counsel of Mordecai because she understands that this marriage is not about herself. She saves a race of people and still to this day, they honor what Esther did in the Perium. They honor what Esther did in the Perium. Your marriage is not about you. Your marriage was designed for you to break generational curses and to leave a legacy for the next generation. And so if you're seeking out marriage for yourself, or if you sought out marriage for yourself, then you missed, you missed the mission. I'm just being honest. You've missed the mission. And if you will begin to pray differently, if your marriage is in a strange place or your marriage will come to a strange place, if God is not at the center, then you can begin to change your prayers, right? Yeah. You can begin to change your prayers towards the mission of God and the purpose of God for your marriage. You're not saying yes, just in marriage to the person you're saying yes to the mission and the call that God has on your life. That's what you're saying yes to, right? That's why your heart has to be positioned correctly so that when you submit, you submit to the right person, right? That you submit to the right person that you understand 
that the marriage that God is calling to you is way bigger than you. It's way bigger than you. Esther was positioned to change a generation. Your marriage, because the divorce rates are so high, because so many things are happening right now, um, the, 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 there's a glory that will be gotten out of your marriage. There is a glory that will be gotten out of the situation. And so you have to understand, God called me to a mission when he called me to a marriage. He called me to a mission. He called us to an assignment. He called us to a holy place. He called us. God wants to do something through your marriage. You're not just married to be married. You're not just married to be married. That's not what God is calling you to. And so you've got to get revelation that your marriage is a part of the great commission. It's a mission within itself to glorify God. Right. And if you will not resist it, God can get the glory out of the situation. God can get the glory out of the marriage, God can get the glory. And if God is positioned in the center of the marriage, then things will be ha begin to happen. Generational curses will be broken. Things will begin to change. Your life will begin to change. And a mission minded marriage looks very different than what this world is saying as a successful marriage. I wasn't perfect in it. We were not perfect in it, but I truly know at the end of the day that God got the glory out of what was going on in our lives and that this ministry that I gave birth to was because of the mission. I need to show, I need, I, I think I've shared this before, but I need to, so, so I, I need to say this again, right? My son Josiah was sitting in class and they were talking about God's sovereignness. And some of the kids were like, well, we don't understand why God causes sickness and disease and people die. And they were going on and on. And Josiah is very silent, right? He does not talk a lot in class. And so he waited and he said, I know for a fact that when my, if my father, if my father had not died or we had not gone through everything that we have gone through, <laughs> that my mother would not be walking in ministry and changing lives at the capacity that she is changing lives. So even though we did not understand everything, God is getting the glory out of what happened between my mother and father. It was necessary for my mother to marry my father so that what is happening right now can happen right now. <laughs> Marriage is a mission. Marriage isn't just about yourself. He told them that. And when he brought that to me, I'm like, he's got the revelation. He says, so even in my dad's suffering, all the pain that we went through, all the things that happened, it was still to God's glory. And so somebody says, so you're saying your death helped your dad's death helped save people. And Josiah said, absolutely. Absolutely. My daddy's death is still saving lives. Esther's decision to honor and obey um, Mordecai, Esther's decision to say yes to God is still being celebrated and changed the lives of the Israelites. It changed the lives of the Israelites. Yes, Juana, God is so very intentional. He is so very intentional. Marriage is a mission, right? You won't have a problem submitting when you understand that marriage is a mission. It's a mission. It's a covenant between you and God with a mission. It's not just about you feeling good. You will break generational ties and curses. When you understand you'll slow down in who you get married to. You'll slow down in who you seek. You'll so slow down in who you, you, for those of you who are single, you won't get from here on after you've heard this message, you'll seek the face of God. You'll fast and pray and ask God, is this the person that I'm supposed to be married to? Is this the person that's supposed to be in life? Those of you that are already married, you will begin to seek the face of God and say, I need my marriage to line up with the word of God. I need my marriage to line up with the word of God because my marriage is not about me feeling good. But see, when we have that position, that's why um, when things happen, we're devastated. We're, we're devastated. We're overwhelmed. We're consumed because we've 
sought marriage or looked at marriage in the wrong um, place. We've sought marriage and looked at marriage from the wrong position. We haven't understood that marriage is a mission, right? That marriage is a mission. And so if you want your life, your marriage to line up with the word of God, ask God, show me the mission for my marriage. Show me the mission for my marriage. Show me the generational curses you want me to break with my marriage. Show me the things that you want this marriage to accomplish for you, not for my glory, not for my edification. And then guess what he's going to do? He's going to bring you all the, that you desire. He's going to bring you all of that. You're going to get all that you desire. You're going to, you're going to get all of that. You're going to get the vacations. You're going to get the, the glory. You're going to get the babies. You're going to get the woo, woo, woo. You're going to get all of that when you submit it to God and understand that marriage is your mission and seeking his face and seeking his timing and not moving before him and fasting as pray. Come on now. She waited. She waited on God, even though it looked like it was crazy. That's good, Andrea. So ask God, what's the mission for marriage? If you're single, ask him about the mission. Ask him, don't put me with nobody that I can't break generational curses with. Don't put me with nobody. I don't want to be with just anybody. I want to be with who you call me to be in Christ Jesus. There is a mission in my marriage. <laughs> Show me the mission in your marriage so that I can fulfill your will for my life. That's it. I think that's it. God, that's it. Lord God, we thank you for your word today. I thank you for your people today. And we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that when we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you began a brand new mission in our life. Lord God, and you deemed us worthy and you gave us more purpose than we can understand. Father God, I hope you got the glory out of this message today. I hope that people, our eyes are opened and that they begin to pray differently and know that you can change every circumstance and every situation. And it just begins all with Jesus. I thank you for grace. I thank you for mercy. I thank you for love. I thank you, Father God, that any place in our heart that is hardened, Lord God, that you are giving us a heart of flesh and we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus. Now, if you've not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, this is your time to do this. And then I want you to just acknowledge that you are a sinner. Jesus is the only way that Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way. So if you not accepted him as Lord and Savior, this is your time to accept him as Lord and Savior. I promise you. Just make a decision. And if your marriage has been broken, just make a decision. God, I'm going to honor you from here on out in my marriage. Show me the mission in my marriage so that my marriage begins to line up with your word. This isn't for you to go try to force this on anybody else. This is your, uh, this is for you to get revelation about what you're supposed to do in Jesus name. I love y'all so much. I'll see you back here in the morning at 5 a.m. Will you believe God for revelation? Will you believe him for revelation? Will you ask God, God, give us fresh revelation in the morning. God, show ourselves strong. And then would you do me a favor? Would you consider being a monthly ministry partner so that we can continue to get the gospel throughout the world? Your partnership is necessary. Your partnership is needed. You can go on the website and read so much about what this ministry is doing. We thank you for your partnership. We thank you for honoring God with partnership. And we thank you for all that you do. God bless the hands of my partners in Jesus name. I See you back here in the morning at 5 a.m. Do me a favor. Go be loved today. Let the love of God, the peace of God, and the joy of God be in you and all around you. And I need you to extend that love to someone else. And then I'll, I, 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 I'll see you in the morning. I love you so much. I love you so much. But more than anything, God loves you more. Yeah, God loves you more. See you in the morning. Love, peace, and blessings. Mm -hmm.